yes, I do. I very much identify myself as a European. The journey through Europe when I was about 18. So we bought this ticket, a free ticket for all of Europe. And we traveled, my girlfriend and me that time, through Europe and sleeping at the stations and sleeping in the trains. And there were no borders and there were, in a way, no limits. And this feeling of freedom is still very much the main cause and the main reason I'm so so much identify myself as a European. Well, for me, it was obviously the Brexit. I was shocked. I wasn't prepared as a, as a politician and personally not prepared that the Brexit really going to happen. And um, still, I think it's a disastrous decision. But it, it was the worst moment in last European history for me. Well, personally, and as a politician, for me, it was the election to the EU Parliament, the last election where we as the Green Party in Germany gained very big success. And um, this was because we had a very pro-European campaign. So I had the feeling that this European spirit is, is an asset and you can win elections with a pro-European approach. And I'm still proud that we achieved this big victory in Germany. While well, I live at the Danish border, I'm in Flensburg and before the Corona um, pandemic happened, I was able to drive with a bicycle or with a car just over the border and it was nothing. Yeah, the border itself became from a frontier, from a line where people were divided to a magnetic line in a way. People were attracted to live in this border region because we speak two languages here. And opening the border and traveling free across the countries was for me personally the biggest and the, uh, yeah, well, the, the, the most successful story of Europe. Well, I'm a politician and we try to be part of the next German government. So this is very concrete and I see the the biggest uh, necessity for the next European step of unity and a common fiscal policy. And if we achieve that, we achieve a more unified Europe. We have the euro, but we don't have a common fiscal policy. So we have a very strong economy in Germany because of the euro. And the other countries or other countries, it's vice versa. The euro is too expensive in a way for them there goods are, are too expensive so they don't profit from the euro so we need an exchange system inside the european union that we can invest in other countries with a common fiscal policy this we don't have we have now this recovery fund coming out of the experience from the uh, corona pandemic crisis the economic crisis and this must be the first step for a general fiscal policy on the European level. Yes, of course, I would agree. And it's not only the European states and the European Union that is not doing enough, but it's the world not doing enough. Um, the climate change is the biggest threat for mankind we have right now at stage. It's bigger than the Corona or COVID-19 crisis. And maybe we should stop about talking about climate crisis. It's, it's a climate and a threat. We as mankind are threatened. But I see progress. I see progress in the European Commission. The Green New Deal or the Green Deal is, a, is an eager program. It's the, it's the council that is the problem. But I'm still hoping that the a strong European regulation together with a European fiscal policy will be successful and that the national governments will follow the track and will follow the line. I think a lot of the progress depends on Germany, 
Germany was not doing enough, not on the European level in general, and especially not on climate issues in special, talking about um, talking about agriculture and traffic, for example, it was always Germany that were on the break, that, that, that was saying, no, we don't want to be too fast and going too strong and so on and so on. So a, pro, a more pro-European German government would also help on tackling the climate crisis in the next decade. I think a lot of people are hoping for a transition into a climate neutral economy, but a lot of people are afraid of it. And if we are doing the next steps, or if we want to be more successful than in the past, we have to do two things. We have to be, we have to get a strong regulation and we need more investments. We need, we have to, we have to convince people that it is a success story. So we need more investments in new technology and new forms of generating electricity. Getting out of coal is the one thing, but getting into renewables is another. So therefore we need more investments and more investments in times of economic crisis meets deficit spending. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about fiscal policy. We have to use the energy that was that was developed to getting the recovery fund working for a continuous form of investments in the next decade. And I think this is the, this is the way to lead Europe to climate neutrality. First, I have to say the plan is for the Green Party of Germany to be part of the next government. We have we have we were going strong the last two years we are about 20 percent which is like two or three times um the polls we had in the last election so we are doing well but there's no guarantee of course and it's the first time a third party is really fighting fighting about the leadership of germany so all the other parties are very nervous and there's a lot of pressure on us but this is what we are there for, okay? We want to we wanna win this fight and be part, a strong part, maybe leading the next government. And then we have to make a difference on all, in all areas. I mean, if we are for, for protecting the climate, then we have to do it in the energy sector and the traffic sector and the agriculture sector and so on and so on. And we are prepared for that. And of course, we can't fail. Maybe we need two... Um, two periods of election, so let's talk about eight or ten years, but in the next eight to ten years, we have to prove that we can do better. And if we can't, the people won't vote for the Greens anymore. So we, are, we have an agenda, but we have to make the agenda working. Maybe we talk first about um, energy efficiency. The, um, the, we have to double the speed of renovating houses, for example. If we're doing it in the same, same speed we're doing now, we need like about 107 years till all the houses in Germany are, climate, are, are better protected against climate emissions. So we have, to, we have to mobilize huge investments in climate neutrality in housing and then warming the houses and heating systems. Then, of course, we have to produce more energy, renewable energy, solar and wind. We have, we have lost all the, all the tracks and all the speed that was and the dynamic that was in building up a new capacity. It's all the old windmills that are doing the job. There are nearly no, no new windmills. So we have to expand that on offshore and onshore as well. We need another regulation that people are more interested in having solar, uh, solar panels on their house roofs, for example. Now the regulation is not very attractive for the people. And then we have to, trans to transform the traffic mobility system that mobility becomes maybe comparable to the, to the, to the use of, um, let's say, video films we have. In old days, we all ha have these um, video tapes in our in our homes. Now we stream, 
Nowadays, we have the cars and we have own bicycles and so on and so on. If we see mobility, mobility, not owning cars as the asset, we can do better with less cars and the less cars, they should be climate neutral. I mean, actually now we have the like Corona ban on short flights in a way, they are not banned, um, there's not a ban, but people don't fly these short distances right now anymore. And we see it's working. So yes, um, if you ask me, I would say flights uh, under 500 kilometers are not necessary and we should ban them. That's right. We can be faster or maybe in the, in the, same, in the, in the same time on trains. I think that as a consumer, we are all, um, we are not doing as good as we try to be as um, citizens, for example. So I don't want to, don't want to educate the people. I don't want to have better people, but better, better politics. So talking about meat production and um, animal welfare and farming, we need better regulations on the political level. And then, of course, if we have fewer animals, if the animal, animals have more animal welfare, then we have another price system. We don't have this dumping system that meat is just nothing worth. The, we, we have the animals, we, we kill the animals and not, we are not um, giving them any worth anymore. But if we have another regulation, we give them more, 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 more space. If we have better stables, then the system will change. So we have to attack the political system, and therefore I'm very nervous and I'm not very satisfied. And this is what this is what I'm this is what I meant when I talked about the German role. Right now, the cap, the common agriculture policy is um, at the stage on the European level. It's the regulation for the next seven, eight years. And we are not doing the necessary thing there. We are just sticking to the old system. Maybe it's a little bit more green into it, but it's very light green. So a system change is not on the table. And this is what was promised when we talked about the Green Deal, but it's not, it's not happening right now. I, I'm afraid that this fight is lost, but um, maybe I will be surprised because people do better than I expect, but I'm not expecting any more, not, not, not a big success anymore. We would push for better regulation and um, more high standards and a reform of the um, ETS system, uh, a baseline, and that we have a price level about 50 euro in the ETS, and not always saying this is too high, this is too much, uh, we can bear it. Well, in a way, politics is about having power, and therefore, the young people, the young generation, in a way, they have to fight for the power themselves. Well, I'm now uh, 50, 51 year, years old, so it's not up to me to say, you do that, you do that, I do that for you. I think this generation, more than any generation before in the last two, three, four decades, has proven that they are highly um, highly up into politics. So they will, they will fight for the power themselves. But the, the one thing we can do is give them rights. And the right to vote on a national level in Germany is you become the right with uh, 18 years and we argue uh, giving it to 16 years. So if you are 16, then you can vote and then you have the right and the ability to fight for your own influence in politics. And what they are doing with their right is up to them. I can offer the Green Party, of course, but if they take the offer, if they, if they do something else, if they are disappointed of the Greens or gladly glad with the Greens, that's up to them, that's not up to me. But I can fight for giving them the ability to be part of the political system by lowering the uh, election age up, uh, down to 16.
Well, there's a paradox. People hear better when they are afraid. If you have bad stories for them, bad news, then our nerve system, our hormone system is getting red and then we are then we are listening. But in this modus, in this red modus, we are not acting well. We are acting better if we have hope, if we have a success story and not a being afraid story. And this is a paradox on to, to get the attention, you have to make clear what it is, what is at stake. But then you have to switch the language, the motivation in doing better. Yes, we can in a way. And um, this is not always easy because it's both sides. You have to be clear on the, on the, on the threats, on, on the difficulties as well, maybe. But you, in a way, in the, in the end, you have to come to a positive attitude. And this is referring to Europe. This is referring to climate crisis. This is referring to the corona pandemic. If we, if we are just saying, well, everything is going to, 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 to shatter and well, we are all going to die. And it's always a, only a question how we're going to die. And poof, everything is so bad, so bad, so bad. And let's do it together. Nobody will listen and they say, oh, well, you're crazy. Die alone, man. I don't care for you. But if we are saying, okay, we have this problem and that problem and that problem, and maybe we can also gain power out of the corona, the COVID-19 experience. And with that power, we tackle all the other problems. Then we have the right approach to politics right now. And if we have this spirit, this mood, then we also, we have a chance, a small chance to 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 reduce our CO2 emissions, we don't have a chance that there's no climate change. That's not on the table anymore. But we have a chance that we control climate change. So let's do it.